This is off planet radio. Welcome back again to Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. It is now September of 2022. And uh, as we continue to dynamo through the eye of the needle in this uh, year of 2022, picking up velocity and a lot of things going on, more things than we can even comment on. I've decided that there's just not enough time and headspace anymore to deal with the riffing of memes that have... uh, been thrown at us a lot of it is basically what is called chaff in military terms it is designed to deflect our consciousness and attention away from the things we really need to deal with as we go through this which is probably the inner world worlds and the inner works so welcome back to our planet radio and um, my guest today is uh, returning after several years um, it seems like we run long cycles here on Off Planet Radio. We do, actually. Um, but he is from the land down under. He is from thecosmicswitchboard.com. And he is, of course, Mr. James Bartley. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Good to be here again, Randy. It's awesome to have you back. Uh, it's been over two years since probably almost three now that we've talked, I think the last time we did anything, you it was you and me and Bernard Gunther yeah. did a show on, on his site. And um, it's always a good conversation. You, of course, have are in the final throes of winter where you are as we're nearing the end of our summer cycle here in North America. And um, weather is obviously a big thing as, <clears throat> well, do we want to go there? The engineering of weather, the fact that I made this statement a few weeks ago in a conversation about the weather, and I said, well, it's becoming increasingly harder for them to bootstrap this thing because it's hard to get out of an artificial weather system and back to a natural one. You know, the the, the whiplash that comes when we attempt to boot back into nature system is horrendous, and I think some of what we're seeing right now, but you may have a different view on that. So let's let's start there with weather. Well, like you mentioned earlier, we're officially in spring down here, uh, down under, but the last few years running, those of us living in in the state of New South Wales, uh, that's where where Sydney is, Newcastle, Mm -hmm. it's it's a large state, we've been ripped off of our summers uh, the last two, three, four years running uh, through what I feel is weather manipulation, uh, far more rain than we should have had. Uh, of course, everything is ascribed to climate change these days, but the uh, the consequences of all this rain, uh, first you have, well, not first, but in the process, you had all these so-called brush fires, which uh, cleared away large swaths of, of trees, vegetation, severely eroded the land, and then on the heels of that come all, all these mega storms because there's not much vegetation around as much in the burnt out places this causes flooding and all kinds of problems people losing their homes so you know it's a cascading effect randy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they just write it all off to climate change justifying all sorts of measures of course once again to protect us and, because they love us so much so i'm just hoping i uh, could be whistling past the graveyard but i'm just yeah. hoping that we get some kind of a summer this year uh you know because uh you know, we've, we've had a rough winter, and we're also talking about the the baneful effects of, of the treatments, right? The stabinations. Yeah. Uh, there's this big faux debate now. It shouldn't have happened, but of course, here we go again. The germ theory versus the terrain theory, and and here's my take on that. Okay, uh, we we know that the thanks to the work of Dr. David Martin that. Uh, 
it was originally a computer generated gene sequence. Well, we know that it's never been isolated from uh, a real living human. Okay, that much being said, something was out there to kickstart this whole thing in places like upstate New York, New York City. And then, of course, they got hordes of people into the hospitals where they protocoled them off, you know. Uh, and then the old people in the, uh, the nursing homes, they, they medazolam them uh, protocol wise, if that's a word, if that's proper English. So that, that pumped up the, yeah, that, that pumped up the casualty figures. And of course we know that the, the PCR test is bogus. We, we've got all that. We know that, yeah. but the level of hair splitting now, Randy, it's like when somebody says someone with some degree of awareness, of what's going on says, Oh, I picked up the C word. I've got the Rona, whatever it is. Right. right? right. You know, another truth that will jump all over them and say, ah, oh, that was just a computer generated sequence, uh, you know, a uh, gene sequence. It, it was never isolated in a lab. Uh, that's tantamount to saying, Randy, you're not really sick. We're gaslighting you. All those symptoms you've got, all the illness. And, and there is a malarial aspect to this also, Randy, where it comes and goes. Yeah, yeah, like some people go, mm -hmm. can seemingly get over it and then whammo, like malaria, it comes back later. I'm satisfied by now that the, the unstabinated are are subject to this because people that have not been stabinated are coming down with it, whatever it is, getting sick, becoming infectious. And then we know that in, in the outset of this a couple of years ago, they made up the whole asymptomatic thing just to scare everyone. And, and with the uh, PCR test just driving up the, uh, the case numbers. But now, two years down the track, people that are really asymptomatic that have little or no symptoms are going around infecting people. So we've reached that stage where whatever it is out there is, is highly infectious, seems to affect some people more than others. And the people that do get a, a affected can stay sick for weeks, months on end. But then now because of this, you know, artificial turf war they've created, oh, there's no C word. There's no Rona. You're not really sick. That's a computer generated gene sequence. You, you've subjected yourself to a PSYOP. Okay. <laughs> so, so once again, we have, you know, in the hair splitting department, all, all of this, you know, wailing and gnashing of teeth, uh, something is out there. Something is really making people sick. We have not seen this level of sickness on the planet since the days of, you know, the, the various waves of the Black Death, Randy. So that combined uh, with, and the fact that winter is going to roll around in, in the, the, the northern hemisphere, and uh, the great stress and strain that's been placed on, intentionally upon the grid system. Uh, the fact that Germany and other countries in the EU are not going to be getting the natural heating gas they normally would, we're going to see a huge uh, surge in, in in sick people. And of course, as you know, once they get into the clutches of the hospitals, it's you know they can be finished off by the protocol. Yeah, if not, if yep. not wary. So I mean that, that's a lot to unpack there. It's all tied in with the weather, weaponry, and the climate change agenda. So that that's where I see things right now. Yeah, well, it looks to me, and it has for um, some time. And this goes back to um, the March 13th press conference that was held at the White House with the military and the governors here in the U.S., where it was stated openly this was a, theater, this was a live scenario. This was a live military scenario. In other words, subtly at that point, they sort of introduced the idea that the military viewed this as a military operation and that we are now in a theater of war, which wouldn't surprise anybody who's able to look at all the data points and realize that they're practicing asymmetrical warfare at a very high level. That You know, all the practices that they ran between two Iraq wars, Afghanistan, and all the little micro wars that they ran um gave them the ability and the insight to be able to launch a wide-scale asymmetrical war and that's what we're seeing it's an information war it's a biological war it's a weather war it's a cosmic war and that's really where i want to go with you today yes. on this is into the cosmic wars again because this is this is not talked about in mainstream yes uh, and along that vein if you just track back linear time sets, 
Wright Brothers got off the, the ground in 1903. It wasn't even a short, long flight by today's standards, right? And then you fast forward to today, nano operating systems and the treatments, graphene, <laughs> hydrogel, aerosolized, uh, geoengineering, uh, seismic weaponry. I mean, that's scan 119 years. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have this level of, of top down control. No, this is not a purely human control agenda. And I would argue that point until someone else is blue in the face. There's something deeper, non-human, very dark going on. Uh, maybe these various aliens at work, reptilians and other beings and the cosmic vassals, maybe they decided on this occasion that, oh, you know, the old paradigm of outright invasion enslaved them and we are their guards. Uh, maybe we won't do that this time. Maybe we'll play it out some other way. Mm -hmm. we have more and more people involved. Uh, therefore, we have more and more consciousnesses, soul matrices to ensnare. Uh, because it, it's not just that the uh, the treatments, so called, are making people ill and are highly infectious. Because of the non operating systems and what have you, and you have that advisor to. Uh, Schwab openly saying, oh, the human soul, the mind consciousness, we can hack into all that. Human freedom, throw it out the window. It doesn't apply anymore. And they're openly saying that. So the potential exists, Randy, my colleagues and I have been talking about this, that it, it, it's not just people succumbing to these treatments and shedding their mortal coil. It's what becomes of what we know of as a soul consciousness yes. afterwards. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. So if, if the potential exists, that the consciousness, the soul, call it what one will, is somehow uh, entrapped, encapsulated. Now, those there's many of us who already feel, and uh, you know, there's some circumstantial evidence to this that we are already in something of a closed loop reincarnational uh, matrix grid cycle. Mm -hmm. We can't seem to break out of here, but now they've um, individualized it, if you will, um, microcosmically to each individual, each individual consciousness, each individual soul matrix, uh, potentially plugged into this non-operating beast system. So even after we shed our mortal coil, we're still within this system, right? So th those are uh, issues that we have to take seriously. And if we're looking at it from a control standpoint, it's far beyond the means of just normal humans to be able to construct the system that we're, we're talking about. And I think what we're seeing is the, I wouldn't say the culmination, but I, what we're seeing bubbling up to the surface is this, what had been a sub Rosa alien non-human agenda all along uh, in a linear time sense, a hundred years, a thousand years is nothing to these beings. But they made it seem, and I've said this before, they made it seem as if all this AI technology and, and what have you was organically developed, if you will, that it would just bright minds over time, uh, you know, exponential rate of learning, et cetera, et cetera, that they were able to come up with all this. But really, AI as we know it is, is older than dirt. It, exactly. It's been, exactly. It's, it's yeah. been around. It's been throughout the cosmos. It's spread out. I, I believe that the AI that we're having to come to grips with now is not is a fundamental aspect of what's been described as the demiurge by the Gnostics, uh, by the Wetico, uh, by some Native American tribes, uh, what mm -hmm. have you, this dark, evil, pervasive spirit, which now has a ghost and has had a ghost in the machine aspect. And when, when you look at how many people, I'm just one of many, okay, where it's not only we, we do a search or we say out loud, uh, some product or service will be you have an interest in it, and then whammo, it shows up at the sidebar of your, of your internet inbox provider, uh, uh, or it shows up on your news feed on social media. It's not just that. Many people, and I'm one of them, can attest to the fact that we merely think of a product or a service, and then whammo, there, you know, so something is going on with Google, this whole AI demiurge system, and the way the internet of things have been set up. The way the, uh, and this is now coming out more and more, uh, the work that Karen Kingston and others have done showing the patents for all this technology. Uh, the fact that, the, you know, the Internet of Things, uh, we, organic beings uh, as we are, rapidly. We are the things that are you know, the Internet of Things of was things, designed exactly. to control. Exactly. And, and yes. so what we're seeing here is, and 
there's always been, as you know, Randy, the occultic, lack of a better term, uh, Luciferian actually yep. tracked back Orion Draconic and further back if we have to. And it's always been married, always been part and parcel of the uh, alien technology, right? Mm -hmm. The the ceremonial uh, magical workings are themselves a form of technology that some of these beings, because of the, the morphic resonance field, because of the latent uh, metaphysical powers contained within their genetic profile, they just, they don't need technology to do certain things. They just organically have the means to, uh, you know, generate energy, uh, become organic portals, if you will. And plus with the knowledge of where the various vortex centers are, where the various power centers are on earth, right? And so many of these power centers, natural vortex centers just happen to have a military base on top of them, right? Go, exactly. Go of course they do. <laughs> just, just like, <laughs> what a coincidence. Just yeah. like how the Templars and others just planted all these cathedrals and temples, what have you, on all these vortex centers um, in the days of yore. This is just the latest extension of that. So, more and more, the Luciferian aspect is coming out. Like, look at um, Digital Joe's most recent speech. Uh, and I haven't even seen the video. I've just seen the still imagery. But when I looked at that, you see these tiny little marine figures way set off in the back. <laughs> that, to me, yeah. is like a, there's an Anunnaki sensibility to that, Randy. Mm, you know, the yeah. big giant yeah. figurehead here, ranting and raving. And then, and then behind him, you see who are supposed to be the guardians of America, right? These two U.S. Marines way back there, like little puny, little put in type figures. And there's a very real Anunnaki uh, archetypal message there that we are your gods, uh, that, you know, we're above you and, and your human toil and your human suffering. Indeed, like the gods of yore, uh, we play games with you and we have the means to make you suffer in unimaginable ways. That's, that's the real message there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all tied in, uh, off-world, subterranean, interdimensional, and with the rollout of the 5G and with the uh, cranking up of CERN once again, uh, I believe the fundamental conscious were already changing, Randy, uh, energetically, or what have you. There were already yeah. things happening from an energetic, yes. uh, atomic, subatomic standpoint that were underway, but in their zeal, in their efforts to co-op natural ongoing processes, like you talked about earlier, they've added on all this ghost in the machine type technology, CERN just being one of them, to amplify and, and, and speed up the process. So I, I believe that we're going to see way more cases of, of demonic, outright demonic possession. The potential exists uh, from these treatments that not only are, are many people already in the process, the death and dying process because of, uh, of the treatments, and we already talked about the potential of their souls and what have you being captured after they shed their mortal coil. But to me, the zombie uh, uh, scenario is still very much in play. Uh, that because these people have all these treatments in that at any time, even before they die, something could be switched on that can just radically change them. We've already seen radical uh, personality changes uh, overtake people since they've just look at Just look at one headline factum. About three weeks, three weeks ago, the actress Anne Hesch and the incredibly bizarre situation, she had just gotten off of doing a podcast that she does with a co-host where allegedly they were drinking wine spritzers and vodka. The woman flies out of her house, gets in her car, drives, cameras caught her at blurring speeds, drives off the road, crashes into a house hard enough with a Cooper Mini to set it on fire and collapse part of the structure. And then she's trapped, obviously mortally wounded. But this, this to me felt like somebody flipped a switch that this type of accident, the bizarre circumstances that hovered around it were all part of some other symptomatic flow that's going on within humanity. Because you got to know that 
all of this is orchestrated. I mean, we don't want to know this. We don't want to say, well, look at that crazy woman. She crashed her car into a house and 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 wound up, you know, horribly, horribly injured, mortally injured. But the truth of the matter is something flipped a switch somewhere to do something that extraordinary. Yes, and we've seen this before. Uh, suddenly, um, oh, I forget the, the the black Hollywood actor's name, Martin. In fact, he had his own TV show called Martin. Uh, he flips yeah. out and... Uh, We've heard this so many times with with Hollywood uh, types where you know they reach a tipping point, the flip is switched, uh, switch is flipped, and then they just go off a deep end. And then that's not even including the bizarre overhead uh, helicopter uh, feed of what's supposed to be a mortally wounded or dead Anne Hesh trying to break out of a body bag. And yeah. then, you know, they're just forcing her down. I mean, that that's so in your face. Well, this uh, is a which, ritual. This is no different. Yes. The Nicobe Bryan helicopter accident yes. that occurred on the eve of Super Bowl in 2020. Was it 2020 or 2019? I'll be forgiven for forgetting that. But that was an inauguration. That was a sacrifice to the gods, to the death gods, in order to bring in a bigger event, which, as we saw unfold in 2020, was in fact what we're now living through. Yes. And it all ties in with this marrying this uh, enmeshment between the alien technology, the AI, and the Luciferian aspect to it. Uh, I mean, how much more in, in your face does it need to be with Digital Joe up there uh, just ranting and raving, and he's gotten all the <laughs> all the aspects of the demonic Anunnaki right, type, shit right? Show. Yeah, yeah it, it is. And so, well, you know, the, the next several months, I wouldn't say we'll tell the story, but I think uh, – the way they're attacking the grid system, the way they're attacking the food distribution system, the way they're arming uh, Antifa to the teeth, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that we're, we're going to see a, a lot more activity coming down the pike. And I, I think that we're going to start to see actual, we've already been watching these food distribution centers as mysteriously burn up and you know, thousands of cows die of like heat exhaustion and stuff mm -hmm, that happened mm -hmm. before. So, I think things are definitely being set up for some major series of events. Yeah, almost on every level, what we call the supply chain, which is code for countries that don't produce their own goods anymore. Uh, the Western nations basically have relied on cheap industrial labor coming from the Pacific Rim in India now for almost 40 years. And as a result of that, they are now completely dependent on an external supply chain. And at the same time, they've sort of, we've, we've collapsed our own systems of production and sustenance here from the farmers to the industrial base. And on a geopolitical scale, we've never seen this before, this reliance on a global grid system. Now, what I'm referring to here as a grid is more what they're calling the supply chain. You talk about the grid. What is the grid to you? Uh, it has different meanings. I mean, the grid in general uh, is this control system that's been variously described okay. as a matrix of control, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But then you, you have the larger kind of grid lattice work, if you will. We're on the same that, page with this. Yeah, that, yes. that seems to keep us in this closed system. Exactly, cannot, yeah. Uh, you know, one would think that if some of us, and I don't, uh, I'm one of these people that some of us have had uh, previous mm -hmm. past incarnations, parallel incarnations on other star systems and other worlds. Uh, and it just makes me wonder, why is it that we just can't seem to incarnate there and we seem to have to come back here all the time, right? One would think that if we do have origins in other places that, you know, the option exists at some level. Can, yeah, it's, but it's a back. soul trap. It's, it's a soul trap. It's been described as the Saturn moon matrix, which on one level I believe is true because those seem to be places that are sort of, sort of containment cells yes. for, for souls. Yes. So I believe that there's that larger matrix and then uh, what manifests around us in the physical plane on this planet and I have to remind myself, Randy, I mean, we've all seen the artist depictions of the Milky Way galaxy. And then, you know, there's a uh, like a little arrow that points, you know, you are here, right? You yeah, know, yeah, tact, yeah. Paying taxes to yeah. perps, right? And, 
you know, we're way out there in Star Wars terms. We're in the boonies uh, in the outer mm-hmm. rim. Mm-hmm. So all of this stuff, uh, if, if you follow, follow conventional wisdom, right, then chances are originated from the galactic center and worked its way out. And so all this stuff, it took this long, which probably a blink of an eye to some of these beings, but it took this long to, to get out to us, right? Billions of people in this closed system. It's this huge, loose, loose harvesting uh, a factory farm is what it amounts to all across the board. So it, it's a matrix of control at many levels. And uh, most troubling to me is the ability they have to uh, exert mind control and uh, this passive, passive passivity, if you will, amongst so many people. They just keep taking it and rolling over, taking it and rolling over. Yeah. Uh, again and again, I don't think we've seen this in, in recorded history where the most of the race seems to not be self-aware, Randy. They don't seem to realize they're in the middle of a multiple threat environment, that they have all these threat vectors coming from so many directions. It, it, it's troubling uh, to see this because in the wild, a newborn knows that it's in a highly dangerous uh, mm-hmm. environment. Uh, certainly its parents know that it's in a highly dangerous environment. Uh, the, all these different animals that are being born, but something has been done genetically and uh, through indoctrination and through uh, the hosting spiritual possession aspect that makes it virtually well nigh impossible for countless people on the planet to wake up to this. And, and I think that from a pragmatic st- standpoint, it may seem harsh, to, uh, harsh. It may seem calloused, but but I'm a practice, pragmatist and a realist. Uh, you know, the die-off has just started. We're going to see a lot more. It's attritional warfare. Yeah. Uh, so many yeah. more people are going to be uh, gone before too long. So we have to gird ourselves to the fact that a lot of the people we know just won't be around in you know, a few years' time, right? So I think humanity will, pockets of humanity will eventually overcome this and break out of this matrix, but it's not going to be a huge prison break. No way. It's not going to be a stampede out of here. There's too many people that have succumbed already. So there's going to be a hardcore element, uh, the few, if you will, that will be able to break out, but it's going to take a lot of work, even that. Yeah, and the, the medicalization is obviously one side of that, the, the various aspects of what we'll call the weaponized microbiology which I have been following the story. I just was going back through archives because I, I, I installed new computer system and I was going through archive drives and actually found a show that I did back in 2007 called kill shot, which was about the scenario that we're talking about today. In the context then of the mysterious deaths of all these microbiologists from Russia Europe, the United States. You remember this? Yes. All these microbiologists suddenly met really unfortunate ends. I mean, they weren't old people. They weren't people that were infirm. They were simply people that just got up one morning and decided to die because they were microbiologists. That was around the time that we saw mad cow syndrome. Yes. Begin to emerge, which was a has a weird overlap with what we're dealing with now in terms of the spontaneity and the lack of a credible vectoring of the disease itself. And what we see now is that when I go back and look at 2019, the vectoring of this doesn't make sense to me for the intensity that emerged from it so quickly. And then the fact that China had done this massive lockdown in Wuhan and the fact that, you know, whatever percentage of people escaped that lockdown, the vector for contagion at that point in time wasn't wide enough to demarcate what emerged from it, except that this was an opportunistic targeting point. And it's kind of my encapsulation takeaway from this. I had written that, this was on Twitter in early 2020, 
my sense of this then was this was quote a digital disease now that was kind of a abstract point that i was making but it was based on some things that i saw and things that i know things that i have been told in that the vectoring of a disease was moving to another stage and that that stage itself was digital because we had reached the point where the digital media had the ability to create an environment of a mental pathogenic a pathogenic that basically became endemic inside of the minds of men and women very bizarre stuff yes the the hive mind parasite virus what it will call it what one will it really uh, did a number on a lot of people when the the psyop is directed at making people think their own mortality is at stake mm-hmm. and they've tried different means over the years the uh, terrorism uh, of course, the climate, climate change, what have you. But the concept that it, this harkens back to some kind of primordial fear, uh, because you know many people that are around yeah. today may have had incarnations during the waves of the you know the Black Death, the, mm-hmm. the plague. So, uh, at a morphic residence level, it still <laughs> has a lot of fear and meaning to them. That's right? a really interesting point. Yeah, and, and so you have people you know the fear of microbes the fear of germs the fear of contamination the fear of you know drowning in one's own fluids uh that's a primordial fear that many people have so when they're being told endlessly that they're they may perish in such a way then reason uh logic all that goes out the window and and so they become and the term has been utilized npcs what have you uh, they become weaponized. Yeah. They, they yeah. become force multipliers for the system because the system could only have worked with a genetic hybridization form of dumbing down, for lack of a better term, cutting people off from that divine source of wisdom where they don't need books, they don't need teachers, they don't need institutions to tell them if something is intrinsically right or wrong. It, it used to be people were born with this ability, right? Exactly. So that's gone out the window for a great many people through genetic, uh, you know, Wetico uh, reasons. And, and then uh, on top of that, you have this uh, authoritarian, latent authoritarian, which in itself is reptilian, Anunnaki. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this authoritarian follow the leader. And in so doing, uh, I get to have my, uh, you know, petty tyranny needs met. Uh, mm-hmm. We see these in the hospitals. We see these all across the board now. Where the, these petty tyrants that may not have been apparent or even noteworthy in the past, now that they've been empowered, right? We just see the whole left just rising up uh, now, and and so that in itself is part of this wetico non-human, and, and of course the Luciferian AI aspect to it. Look how easy it is to mobilize. So one of these these woke legions just by a single Twitter, you know, some some raging leftist professor goes on to the Twitter account. Oh, so and so has said said this. Let's you know, let's burn torches in their front yard. <laughs> let's yeah, threaten yeah, them and their yeah, families. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so medieval. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, is this what the human race has been reduced to? Yes, unfortunately it has. Right. And so uh, we just have to be able to see through that, that the Luciferian aspect is just bubbled to the surface. Now, I was just reading this article this morning, and you've probably come across it. I think it's in Variety, right? And and they were lauding this cannibal movie where the, uh, these... Yes, I actually go there because this is something I've been covering. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. new uh, movie with the Timothy Calumet. He's a French actor. Yes. The director is Italian. They did this movie called Call Me By Your Call Me By My Name, which was a film that came out in 2017 or something about uh, a man and a teenage boy who have a sexual affair. There's that and then there's another movie that just came out and it's about uh, an open uh, glorification of cannibalism where I, th- I don't know the whole story plot yet but I've got the article I can forward it to you where uh, this this gay couple uh, decide that 
they want to be cannibals or they already were cannibals. And uh, the film depicts very grisly, uh, gruesome scenes of them munching on arms and limbs. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this. Yes, and uh, apparently at the film festival that uh, was being covered, there was uh, like an eight minute standing ovation. Uh, this was, yeah, this is the same film that I'm talking about too. Here it is. It's I'm, Timothy Chalamet's sexy, Chalamet, yeah. bisexual cannibal stuns mm -hmm, Venice, mm -hmm. Bones and All. That, that's Bones and the, all. The movie's called Bones and All. So what we're seeing is what's been there all along, Randy, this draconian Orion Babylon. So interesting. Thing. There's 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 some interesting intersections that go on here. At the same time, um, I believe Netflix has released a series about the family of Armand Hammer. Remember mm. Armand Hammer? Yes, yes. I, well, this focuses on Armand Hammer and the family itself. And in the midst of all this is the actor Army Hammer, who played opposite Timothy Chalamet. And call me by by my name. Army Hammer was basically taken down. He's he's lost his Hollywood career right now because of massive allegations of sexual abuse professionally. So you have the intersection of those two actors, and then this common overlap theme going on because inside of this series, which is based on a book by the one daughter of Armand Hammer that would have been his granddaughter. So you're talking second generation. Um, they're discussing the proclivity towards cannibalism and specifically with Army Hammer. So again, this pops up in a couple of different places at once, which that always gets my attention when I see intersectional data come in. So we yes. have this meme, which is now it's just it's cross paths with the LGBT movement, and it is intersecting with all of this other perversity, this darkness, this sickness, this sexual molestation. I guarantee you that that, that just a, a tick away is child porn and trafficking. But in the midst of all of this, we're getting kind of a peephole view towards normalization of this within the culture normalization yes. of even pedophilia which is you know be actively being pursued by many people probably not the least of which may actually be the president of the united states right now um so you have that you have all these intersections going on with all of these different bizarre conversations which <clears throat> people like us have been talking about for years i mean I've done a series of shows with a, uh, an Irish shaman named more famous on, on cannibalism and the historical antecedents of it. This is very much Draco and Anarchy stuff. Absolutely. Because this is what happens at the collapse point of a civilization. Understand, from my perspective, they build civilizations. I don't consider civilizations to necessarily be a great idea. They build civilizations they use them, they drain them, and then they collapse them along yes. with collapsing a timeline. Can you, you want to go with that? Well, we've seen it. Uh, I mean, look how long the Roman Empire lasted, and then the uh, it broke off. It became the Roman Empire in the West, and then the, uh, the Eastern Empire uh, out of Constantinople. Point being is that uh, that lasted for quite a long time in linear time terms, far longer than the America, uh, you know, the rapidly crumbling America uh, is going mm -hmm. to last. So it shows that, you know, there's this continuity at work where certain themes, certain behaviors, certain uh, social mores and standards are, are progressed. It could be some Rosa at first, could be with the elite select circle at first, and then it, it widens out and, until you have the total debauchery, total uh, wanton, you know, just evil that became the norm in, in so many of these uh, Roman empires and and, uh, and similar empires. And what we're seeing now is what's been there all along is, is bubbling to the surface because pedophiles are no longer referred to as pedophiles. They're minor attracted persons. Minor attracted persons, maps. And, and, yeah. And, yeah, maps. Yeah. And, and therefore, they're subject to protection 
because they shouldn't, you know, feel offended or afraid or, uh, you know, all that. But they probably being... wind up being encumbered under the Americans with Disability Act. I mean, yes, yes, uh, th that's and, and what, what we're seeing now is what's been there all along. I believe, for lack of a better term, is part and parcel of this genetic hybridization, cutting us off from source process. Yes, that significant swaths of, of the human surface population uh, has been genetically imbued with a predilection for lack of a better term, cannibalism. Uh, call it, call it a cannibal receptor for lack of a better term, right? You know, neurologically, genetically, whatever, morphic resonance field, whatever the case may That's be. That's an interesting term, James. Because there have been times, because of uh, famine, plague, uh, wars, what have you, that people have resorted to cannibalism. And mm -hmm. we, we know of specific instances, the Donner Party and, uh, you know, the, the Uruguayan uh, football team in the Andes. We, we know those things have happened, right? Uh, the Japanese army, Imperial Army in, in the Pacific campaigns uh, frequently resorted to cannibalism. So the, the latent tendency is always there. But I think what's happened is because of these receptors, for lack of a better term, not probably just anatomically, but probably perhaps even in, in our energy fields, energy bodies, this provides the toehold, the means for these interdimensional beings, be they reptilians or various other entities, various stripes of the parasitic variety, it allows them to gain access. Let me give you an example. I was reading a book by, and I'll try to wrap it up. We've got a few minutes in this first segment. Uh, I was reading a book by a veteran of the Australian SAS who served in Afghanistan, right? And the first chapter starts about this recurring nightmare he was having, right? And this nightmare involved him wandering this battlefield. I mean, shell craters, bodies all over the place. And he's going from one place to another. He works his way into a, into a shell crater, uh, comes across a dismembered human hand and bites into it. And then the shock of that forces him to wake up and, you know, cold sweat. And it's just a recurring dream. Point of relevance is that because these entities have the ability to conduct stage vantage dreams, enter into us even in our sleep state, because they have the ability to alter their, their density and their frequency, so they come into us while we sleep and they essentially take over our dreams from within. And so it comes as no surprise that in some of these dreams, they guide us in this cannibalistic direction or whatever the case, whatever the behavior modification agenda is for that individual, whether it's the get them to question their own gender identity, uh, develop mm -hmm. a predilection for, for minors, whatever the case may be, or cruelty to animals, whatever the case may be, because we spend a significant portion of our life sleeping and we're hence quite vulnerable, uh, these entities can come in at night and then they can make us have these kinds of dreams, right? And then you add on to that cinema, Hollywood, uh, academia, even the New York Times, if memory serves, in the recent past said something about, you know, we may have to think about the unthinkable, we may have to think about eating human meat, right? Uh, so that theme, that meme was always there. And what they've also done is, you probably heard about this, Randy, uh, celebrity synthetic meat. And right, it was, it's right. been around for, for, yeah. for, you know, for a while now, where apparently they get a biopsy or a sample from some celebrity, could be anyone, and then they grow synthetic meat, and then all the trendies and all the, you know, the, the, the fanboys, you know, indulge in said synthetic meat. But it's not really cannibalism, right? Yeah, go that's, look up the LA, LA Cannibal Club. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, so, and so it all has to do with the... They fetishized it, basically. Yes. But fetishization is a subset of something that is a much darker thing that lurks beneath the perverted human psyche yes. which is a lot of what we're dealing with now the culture has been overtaken by it isn't so much the overt acts as the frequency of what is traveling through our system now the fact that you can go onto the internet and access everything yes all the range of human behavior is fully on display yes children can find it which should scare the hell out of us yeah but the dark frequency 
is not human. This is not human. No, it's not. And one of the things, you know, I think we have to consider, talk about, and entertain is the fact that we've allowed off-world intelligence to basically pervert our basic inclinations as human beings. Yes, and, and, you know, quick comment before uh, we end this. been a very interesting segment, once again, Randy, is uh, one of the re revelations that's come out, not exactly news to us, uh, about this effort to rebrand UFOs as UIPs, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, was, yeah. <laughs> apparently there was a source, and we can talk more about this, apparently yeah. there was a source in military intelligence who stated to the effect that, you know, what's really got, people troubled in positions uh, people in position to know is what was described as demonic technology Randy. but then again that's that ai what mm -hmm. demi urge mm -hmm. thing that the you know gnostics and, and, and to what appears to our modern eyes as ai so and now this ai increasingly is swimming through people's bloodstreams and i mean that's how bad it's gone yeah Maybe what we'll do is we'll leave this first segment with that, um, along with whatever you would like people to know about what you're doing, where you're doing it, and how they can find you. Oh, great. Uh, the cosmic switchboard.com. Uh, we've got uh, you know, quite an archive now. We've been at it for four or five years, and we've had a number, like Randy, we've had a number of really good guests, and we've got a lot of good commentaries under our belt so yes <laughs> uh, go to the cosmic switchboard.com and check it out and then my name is james bartley i also do consults for people that have had alien abduction reptilian military uh abduction experiences so you can find out more about that on my website perfect i suspect there's a lot of people out there that need to hear what you're saying, the Bartley's commentaries are my favorite. I love going to your website and finding those. They're succinct and passionate, and you just put it all out there. That's going to wrap this first segment. Uh, for those of you who are on the public side, uh, we will bid you adieu. And for those of you who are on the subscriber site at Patreon right now, um, we'll continue the conversation over there. Details, information in the box below. If you find this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button, all the yada yada things that you got to do. I'm Randy Moggins. This is our planet radio. The truth is out there. It's inside you. It is now time to fight it. See you on the flip flop. This is Off Planet Radio. 